please welcome to the podium your colleague, Jake Rogers. Thank you very much, Dr. Fry. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I know that it hasn't been easy for my fellow classmates or for any of you who traveled so far away or pretty close just to be here today. It's been a lot over these past four years. If it's okay with you, I'd like to start by addressing my classmates. Look at you guys sitting there looking like a bunch of doctors. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Can you believe it? We made it. Can I please, once, hear you say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. <laughs> Family members, partners, spouses, friends, um, veterinary technicians, interns, residents, mentors, professors, and everyone it is an incredible honor to be here with you today and to share this monumental success of not only myself and my classmates, but you as well. I know it hasn't been easy for all of us. And to be honest, there were moments that I wondered how I would ever get to this point. And I know many of my classmates felt the same way. You might have as well. <laughs> Veterinary school has been one of the most challenging, exhausting, yet rewarding and worthwhile times of my life and I owe it a lot to you. We've crammed our heads to full capacity and then a little bit extra. Yet somehow, most of the transformative information within the profession came from you guys and was the easiest to learn. So thank you for sharing that with me. Before vet school, I thought I had a pretty good idea of all the different types of veterinarians in the world. I mean, look, there's small animal vets, and there's large animal vets, right? <laughs> okay, and then we have some exotic vets, we've got some shelter vets, we have uh, wildlife vets and emergency vets, and then yes, okay, we have certain specialties like surgery, and then we have dentists and radiologists and ophthalmologists. But have you heard of professional figure skating vets? <laughs> I know two. In fact, Dr. Clarissa Freemeyer told me, it's like being Cinderella in reverse. She went from being a Disney princess on ice to wearing scrubs and hanging out with animals. <laughs> How about breakdancing vets? We have a couple of those here too. Dr. James Yoshimoto told me breakdancing has helped him hype up a party, cover up his awkward dancing, and produce amazing, hilarious reactions from friends and classmates. We have diligently studious vets, as Dr. Ashley Iadins told me, writing the study guide started off as a study tool for myself, but our class has such an amicable spirit that was inspired to share them with everyone. Thank you, Ashley, you got me. Yeah, that's right. She really helped get us all through. On the other hand, we have the back row vets. That's right. Some who might be having the most fun during class, but we'll never know. As Dr. Steve Pannone pointed out, Going back from the back row to veterinarian? That'll probably be all right. <laughs> How about an entrepreneurial vet? We've got a bunch of those here today as well. I asked Dr. Aaron Wallace what it's like to be graduating as part owner of a company, and he said it gives him a lot of confidence uh, because he has a network of people. If he gets in a tight situation, say with an exotic patient in the future, he knows that Mark Stetter's phone number is. <laughs> Thank you. And now you know that too. <laughs> Some use vet med for the travel benefits, as Dr. Katie Dursmith told me. I'm looking forward to learning from and immersing myself in Spanish-speaking community while working as a USDA veterinarian in Puerto Rico. Others use vet med for the exercise, as former US Marine Dr. Ashley Schwartz elucidated, walking up zero dark 30, running to find the sun while shouldering a timber telephone pole, running team, is a lot like holding a sedated horse's head for an oral exam in the field. <laughs> we have the noble parental vets, like Dr. Elton West, father of three, who said, I spend a great deal of my day assessing, planning, treating, and often trying not to be killed or maimed by unpredictable, vicious creatures. 
I also get to work with animals. <laughs> and we have the brave firefighting vets, like Dr. Nicole Carrier, who told me some of the same traits that make good firefighters also make great vets. The reliable, responsible colleagues and classmates who came along with me on this journey were there in the trenches celebrating the wins and sharing the sorrows. Sometimes that's all it takes. You know, we've learned a lot from each other over these past years, and that'll happen when you sit in the same room, day in, day out, year after year with each other. Some lessons come fast, like Dr. Leanne Sert proved when she told me, having twins during vet school is basically like riding the most thrilling, exciting, scary, and mind-blowing roller coaster ever created, where at any moment you feel you may be thrown out of your seat, but two times. <laughs> and some lessons take more time, as we learned how to say polio and cephalomalacia in our first year, but it took us over three years to learn that Dr. Sam Shu's name is actually Dr. Sam Shai. <laughs> and Dr. Sam Shai, he learned he should probably just get Dr. Sam embroidered on his coveralls, <laughs> because if all these wicked smart people can't pronounce it, then there's no hope for anyone else to either. <laughs> Some classmates taught me a little later in the game like our 10 University of Alaska Fairbanks classmates who watched video recordings of our lectures for the first two years and joined the remaining 140 of us for the final two years. Megan Kelly told me, yep, that, let's hear it for them. <laughs> While you're going. Megan Kelly told me this is like having a family reunion with a distant family relative you haven't seen in years, except there's 140 of them and they know your name and face, but you don't know theirs. <laughs> Others started much earlier on their veterinary career, but joined us later and taught us later after a break to complete a master's or a PhD, like Dr. Kristen Davenport, who said, when I walked into the first day of third year, I knew almost none of you, but today, this group looks so familiar. <laughs> Getting to know you and learn about your journeys has spiced up the last two years of this seven-year educational epic. On the flip side, some left early, but have been teaching us invaluable lessons all the way through to the end. Like Nora Jean Nealon said, while I left my friends, peers, and colleagues in the class of 2019 to complete a PhD, I am confident that they are people that will be here for a lifetime. You see, there are far too many amazing stories right here in this room right now that I could fit into this 10 minute speech, but getting to share them has been for me the best part of my veterinary school experience. Today and tomorrow are monumental parts of our stories, and like all of the most exciting parts of a story, they will fly by all too fast. Which reminds me, Dr. Joel Helbling told me, at the end of the day, it's all about the bottom line, and the bottom line is do what makes you happy. Not sure what the actual bottom line in the business world is, maybe profit or something. I miss that day of our business class <laughs> for, well, you know why I miss that day of the business class. <laughs> so, to my classmates, I want to say, savor this time. Share it now, later, with the people you love, to all the aspiring vets who want to know how it feels to be right here, right now, and with yourself in later days, once you've settled into the title of doctor and it's lost some of the magic that it has right now. We've earned this. As Dr. Anna Fales told me, if you could only see through my eyes the change in your poise, maturity, and competence now compared to your first semester, you would know you're ready for what comes after. I know you'll make us proud. <laughs> but if you're like me, there's certain uncertainties that leave this lingering feeling of maybe dread, a little bit of terror. <laughs> but in gathering these stories, Dr. Hendrickson, Dr. McPhail, and several other of our role models shared similar stories of feeling the exact same way now, but look at them and where they're at. Someday, we might be there too. Now, it may be too late to improve your class rank. <laughs> it may be too late to study all of the things that might make a pig itchy for Navli one more time. But it's not too late to keep asking your classmates about their stories. And it's not too late to share yours, as we will quickly be transitioning from role models or to role models for others, just like the ones who helped us get here today. Thank you all for being such a tremendous part of my story. And I look forward to how all of our stories will move forward, converging, diverging, and inspiring. Thank you. <laughs>